Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be tackling the Philodendron White Knight. I'm going to be sharing with you the care, and this is an easy one, and I'm going to be propagating it. But keep in mind, in this propagation process, we're going to try to bring out some variegation. We're going to try our luck with it. So uh, really quickly about the species, not much is known about it. I did do a Google search extensively and everybody just says that this is a plant that is from South America and it's just a variegated plant and I don't buy that at all with the name like Philodendron White Knight. This is probably a cultivar, a hybrid or a mutation or possibly even a product of tissue culture. But I don't know, if you know the answer for sure, I think we would appreciate the answer in the comment section down below. So do let us know. But this is a really, really beautiful philodendron. It's a reliable grower. It's actually one of the easier ones, fastest growing, I would say. And the variegation is pretty stable, but it is inconsistent. Uh, in my hand here, this is all from one plant that I bought about two years ago. And I've actually sold quite a few pots of these. Sorry, the sun in my eye right now is coming at that angle. Um, but I've sold some of the ones with spectacular variegation because those will fetch a better price. But I realized that this new leaf here, for example, has put out really, really nice variegation. And something about them that I really, really adore is their red main stem and petiole with this beautiful cream white stripes variegation on them. And of course, the leaf itself is beautiful. So shades of green, it's got light green, dark green, and if you're lucky, you'll get a little bit of burgundy on it, like this leaf over here. So it is a complicated and beautiful uh, pattern on the leaves, and the care is very, very similar with your other philodendrons. This is a climber, you do need to give it a moth pole. I did not give mine a moth pole, so it's kind of leaning over, but they can get bigger and bigger leaves, but as far as I know, they don't get those big leaves that span straight. They just stay relatively a good size if you let it climb, but then it stays the same shape. As with most variegated plants, more light will give you more variegation, usually. But you don't want to go to the point where you burn it. So in terms of sunlight, you do want to give it bright indirect light. And a little bit of morning direct sunlight seems to be really good for them in bringing out the variegation. These guys have been grown under different conditions. I just actually gathered them because they're all over the garden. I'm trying to basically rescue my plant here because I've been busy. I've been kind of neglecting my garden a little bit. But it is time to propagate this guy. But I digress. But watering, same as your other philodendrons, you do want to let them dry out completely between watering. Although this is a little bit more forgiving with watering than some of your other plants. Like for example, the closest relative would probably be the Pink Princess, which actually do not tolerate overwatering at all. These guys are actually much stronger at tolerating um, overwatering and also underwatering. They can tolerate a bit of drought, but you don't want to go let them go too far. Uh, you know, off from <laughs> overwatering or underwater. I give this my aeroid potting mix right now and they're all living in terracotta pot. So it's living in a very grippy, chunky potting mix that dries out fast and I do water them every day. If you have them grown in a more compact or uh, moisture retentive potting mix, do water them a little bit. Make sure you have them dry out completely between watering. And again, you really need to give them a moss pole for them to climb on, otherwise they'll just flop over and the leaves are just going to get smaller and smaller as it creeps along if it uh, didn't find something to climb onto. Mine has been growing outdoors, so they're all putting out these beautiful aerial roots which will make our propagation quite easy, easy but hard. Like, because you don't want to break these roots when you are potting them up because if you break them, they're prone to infection. The longer the roots that you have, also the higher surface area that you have for rot. So we're going to get that at the uh, propagation part of the video. But fertilize is the same with your other house plants. They are very, very pest resistant, not pest resistant. I have not had any pest issues on these where I had, you know, a lot of mealybugs, spider mites on many other plants. These guys have given me no problem in the last two years. But I also use systemic pesticides. So I just spray down everything with pesticide. But again, other philodendrons, monsteras, Allocations especially, they have a lot more pest problems and this one has just given me none. Beautiful, beautiful plant and do, they do really well indoors. Although if you have them indoors in lower humidity, they may not give you these uh, long aerial roots to propagate from. Uh, and one quick tip before, in case I forget, if you do have dried out aerial roots like this, it may be better to propagate them in water. Ooh, since our main topic today is going to be about variegation, about trying to bring out more plants that are variegated where possible. The growing eye, I cannot find any on this node, but basically the growing eye need to coincide. For example, right here, you see the white stripes and the burgundy stripes. If the growing eye coincides with this, the leaf is going to give me some beautiful burgundies and white stripes on it. 
So you do, where possible, want to find growing eye that coincides with those stripes. But I don't see any. I think I see it. Do you see that? That's a growing eye right in there. Maybe for these guys, hang on, I just came to a discovery because I cannot find a growing eye anywhere outside along the main stem. So it is possible that their growing eye are all located inside, in, in there, in the sheath. So I'm hoping that some of them will have a uh, coincide with the stripes. As you can see here, this is not a very, very striped specimen here. So when you want to buy a philodendron white knight or pink princess or whatever, the top portion here is actually really promising. Look at all these beautiful stripes. So when you're buying uh, these plants, make sure that you're looking for ones with really, really nice variegation on the stem. Otherwise, you have to grow them out like me and then propagate it to try to bring out some variegation. I'm a little bit worried about this because it is putting out a new leaf. So the new leaf may not make it usually. All right, the first volunteer is going to be this one right here. It is still pretty young, but I'm going to cut it up. Look at how cute the aerial roots are. It's like trying to reach out, it's trying to leave. Don't go! <laughs> but this one is um, rooted right into the pot. Let me see if I can take it out gently. Yeah, so this is the one aerial root that we're going to need to root the top cutting here. So I'm going to go ahead and make the cut right away. There, this is our top cutting. And this one, I'm actually going to probably, it's dripping a little bit, it's bleeding. Look at that. <laughs> um, this one, I'm actually going to put in moss, I think, because it's already got some beautiful aerial roots here. So let me tell you what happens down here. I don't think I can make another cut, although I can if I have a knife, I can cut right into it. But a new growth point should appear where we said earlier, in the middle over there. Oh, that's a piece of, that's a piece of slow, slow release fertilizer stuck in there. I'm sure it will sting. Hang on, let me take it out. Let me get it out with like a stick. That might burn. <laughs> okay, sorry little guy. Okay, let me see actually. It's, it's very watery in there. So I'm not sure where the growing eye is for this one, but it is, if it is coming from the middle portion here, I do see some stripes. See that stripe right down the middle? So maybe that will put out a uh, variegated leaf. But when you cut it off like this, sometimes it'll push out more than one vine. It will push out two. So this is a really good contender for a mother plant later. But back to the top here. So basically I want to let the blood kind of come. The blood is actually a good indication that this is a healthy cutting. This means that it's got all these beautiful nutrients and juices stored in there. It's going to help the plant along. And I, I just uh, applied some activated charcoal on it so that it uh, kind of sterilizes the wound a little bit, prevents uh, bacteria and fungus from forming in there. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using different potting medium for different cuttings because the shape of each cutting or the condition of each cutting will determine the best way to propagate. Usually for top cutting, I would actually do water propagation. But for this one, I'm just gonna go with good old moss because it's got a decent amount of aerial roots. And I just wanna use a little bit, you guys. Just use a little bit of moss. Don't, don't overdo it. I'm actually good, just like that. And I just wanna keep this a little bit humid and it will just continue rooting. If, and at some point it's got more roots, uh, it may be time to move it into an aeroid potting mix later. So yeah, this is the first cut. You know what? I'm going to get greedy on this. Hang on. So I got me a knife. I decided to just go, go to town with this. Why not? Okay. I really love the color of the wound. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit creepy for some of y'all, but yeah, let me get the, the blood off this plant. This is actually a really nice cutting. Look at it. It's got decent amount of roots here. I may even go directly into my aeroid potting mix with this one. Seal the wound. It's probably in a lot of pain right now. So sorry. Yeah, this can go in moss or directly into an aeroid potting mix. It's up to you. But for me, I think this is ready for aeroid potting mix. Gently wiggle it in. And this is actually used, something used to live in here. And I know that some of y'all actually told me, don't use, don't reuse your potting mix. Always use fresh ones. But I don't know, man. Like, I think the environmental impact is quite a lot. So where possible, if I know that the plant is not diseased, I will try to reuse 
the potting mix where possible. Always recycle. And if you're a little bit worried that something may be living in that potting mix before, I've got a solution. This is fungicide. It's actually pretty safe for the plants. So I just pour a little bit. So whenever I water the plant, the fungicide gets seeped into the water. And then this may prevent, I don't know, some kind of uh, all the, the bad fungus or whatever, if there were any, because I suspect that there isn't, uh, it will help them along. And of course, with all of these cuttings, I forgot to mention, I am going to use pesticide. I'm having fungus gnat issues in my upstairs area. Uh, this is a slow release fertilizer. It's gonna fer uh, fertilize them over time and they, these guys they actually don't need any nutrients right now. They just need to do their own thing. They need to push out roots and leaf at this point. But the slow release is gonna release nutrients over a period of time. So it's gonna get the most concentrated nutrient maybe in three to six months from the application. So yes, this is done. This is how much I put. And I really wanna keep this on the dry side again. I have overwatered many, many of my cuttings this way, so I need to keep my eye out on this guy. And I may put some of these in my propagation box, so I've been kind of experimenting with propagation boxes. Uh, there's like very little variegation on this leaf. I think this was probably placed in a more shaded area, possibly. And if I cut it, I think I am going to lose some leaves. So I'm, I'm actually let, gonna let this grow out on its own first. Look at how close the internodes are. It's really, really gonna be hard. So I'm gonna put this in a brightly lit area. And for this one, there are, a lot of my plants are living under other plants, but there are some really nice variegations on here. And I see a point here where I can make the cut. There. If I was greedy, I can actually take one more cutting. I can cut right, right here, but I don't know. I don't know, man. But there's no variegation on the stem. Do you see that? On this one right here? There's not a lot of variegation on here. So I, I have a feeling that this cutting is gonna give us mostly green leaves. But that's okay. I guess we will find out when we get, get to it. And this one, I'm just gonna, again, go with the uh, aeroid potting mix. I'm hoping that we can find any one contender here for water propagation because that is actually a very, very easy way to propagate. But if you guys are not new to my channel, I'm sure you've seen me water, water propagate so many plants that you guys are bored of watching me propagate in water. And for the top cutting like this, the new leaf is gonna continue to grow out from the, uh, the patio of the latest leaf. This, this right here, in fact, this triangle, this is where the new leaf is gonna come from. And as you can see, it's not going to be variegated. But let's see, I guess, I'm not, uh 100 sure about this maybe 90 percent sure <laughs> but yeah and i'm not gonna mark any of these so i'm not gonna remember what i said sorry i i have way too many propagations going on so during the update maybe you can pay attention that this is the latest leaf this is what it looks like with a little bit of spot here so when i do the update you can see if the next leaf is variegated or not or if it makes it i didn't even know it may not make it <laughs> and then for the next one here do I wanna, do I wanna be greedy? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right. So this is where I made the cut. I made the cut right like that. So somewhere along here, this cutting, there will be a growing eye again. I suspect they're all in there somewhere in the inside, but I don't see on, on this one, but there should be something. Maybe this is one I'm gonna do with water propagation, actually. Yeah, it's got a pretty variegated stem, actually. Look at that, it's got a very, very nice, nicely variegated stem. All right, with this one, I, yeah, I'm not gonna cut some more, but as you can see, this is where I made the cut. This was actually a parent plant, and this is the vine that came out from it. So actually, when this is cut off, it is potentially uh, possible for it to push out another vine from down below. If there, let me see. Yeah, there's more nodes down there. It is possible for them to put out secondary vines. So, oh, in fact, I see something. I see a little bit of uh, protrusion right here. So it may be uh, ready to push out a new growth. All right, and for the big mama, big mama plant here. I really am investing in this top cutting because it's got such beautiful variegated stem here. Look at that. 
very nice and the new leaf you can see it's already oh my god i'm starting to regret cutting it out it's it's looking like it's a nice color on the on the next leaf now for this one this is a bit tricky because i don't want to break the aerial roots but it is like shaped in this funny way <laughs> so i may have to give it a pretty let me see pretty big pot swirl it in nice nicely and it is got a, a bit of aerial root here so if i actually bury this a little bit deep in the potting mix this is going to turn into roots as well and with this this is tricky because i cannot plant this in the middle anymore because the, as you can see the roots i'm trying not to break it it's it's pushing the plant off to one side i'm just gonna give this fresh a fresh aeroid potting mix this is actually moist because uh, i think rain got into my <laughs> my potting mix bin so I'm not going to be watering this today for sure. And because it is a uh, rainy season now, I'm going to be uh, growing all of these uh, indoors because there's no way I can control how much water it's getting out here now. A lot of my more mature plants can survive. They can get rained on every day, but not these guys. They're actually very sensitive right now. You have to really watch out like this amount of moisture that I have in the potting mix. This is enough for the next maybe even two days like I don't want to water this for the next two days and some people say don't give it a high nitrogen fertilizer if it's variegated because the nitrogen do uh, promote chlorophyll that's what, not what we want but that has not been tested that theory but I, I can see that happening I don't know if you if you believe in that you know or have you have experience feel free to comment in the section in the comment section down below this one's got really long roots I'm actually really worried for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it. Cut those roots because I don't want it to break in between during propagation. And I'm going to uh, sterilize the cut ends. And because I reused some of the old potting mix in this, I'm going to be using a little bit of fungicide as well. People always ask me, how much do you put? You know, I've never measured anything. I eyeball everything. It stresses me out if I have to measure um, everything. Like how many... How many of these slow release pallets like people want to know exact formulas and i'm sorry i'm just not that kind of person i uh, just know not to put too much just based on experience okay and this is actually a very very good cutting right here look at that it's got a half moon leaf very beautiful let me let the blood drip out it has very long roots i'm very worried for this one but this one I may, because they're a bit soft, because they do get rained on every day, so this I may be able to get away with. Let me see if I can swirl it. This one already broke. I want to cut it off. If it gets rained on every day, or you miss the aerial roots often, they will grow um, into this. Ah, oh, I heard a snap. Something broke. Yeah, I broke this whole thing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay. No more breakage allowed. You're not allowed to break. And you only want to use a little bit, you guys. Don't use, you don't need a lot. Just create ambient humidity around the roots. You don't want to drown the, the plant. I don't know how many leaves I want to leave on this. I think two leaves is fine actually because there's actually a lot of roots here. If I take off too much, it's just going to suffer, I think. Look at that. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is a nice, beautiful variegated cutting. All right, it's time for a family portrait. So there's four parent plants over there. And then these guys, uh, one, two, this is in water. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got eight cuttings and four parent plants. Let's see how many I end up with. I'll see you guys soon in a few months we are about two weeks in and this one leaf actually fell off so this was my propagation box i opened it look at all this condensation that was in the in the box so it's really nice and humid in here we get this little bit of root so cute fuzzy but this one here as you can see the leaf has come off and i just wanted to take off the uh, patio hang on let me do it done sorry couldn't do it with one hand while filming Apparently, uh, I was right, the growing eye is, in fact, inside the patio. 
for these guys this one doesn't look like it's variegated look at the stem here this is the variegated portion and this is not so yeah and the roots has actually rotted this is not good Maybe this may have been kept a little bit too wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the dried roots and I'm just going to plant this this way up like that, laid on the topsoil. Welcome to a five weeks update. This one that we didn't cut is put out a beautiful variegated leaf. How nice. I don't know if I predicted that before in our previous video, but there should be some white stripe going along here to produce this kind of leaf. But this is a parent plant that we cut and it's put out a new vine. There's a little bit of variegation there, so you can see how nice. And this one hasn't put out, oh, maybe it is trying to put out something, but off to the side. <laughs> Hello. And this one is also put out a new leaf already. But I can't see if the new stem is variegated or not. Yeah, this, is, this thing's in the way. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit to find out. But these are the mother plants. Let's look at the cuttings. This one, I'm a little bit worried about. The leaf looks a little bit yellowing. Uh, sometimes it could be a sign of rot. No, hang on, something's trying to grow out of this. This is fine. And it's pretty firm in here. I don't know if I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna disturb it. I think this, is, this should be okay, but sometimes you can squeeze the pot a bit to let some air in. They actually love it when you do that. And then next to it here, this one's put out a baby new vine already. Again, whenever I see this, sometimes you just wanna squeeze it a little bit just to give some aeration in there. There's one over here, this is getting better light and it's living in moss. Put out a new leaf and this leaf should be wonderfully variegated. If you see the stripe over there. Let me see if I can see some of the roots here. Yeah, I don't want to disturb it too much either because when you disturb it, you're, you're slowing down the progress. The roots need to find find itself again. Yeah, it's doing all right. I'm not gonna untangle that. I'm gonna slowly blanket this back. Just cover this ever so gently in moss. Let it find that blanket of humidity around it. It doesn't need to be buried or compacted or anything. Now this guy needs to it. I'm not sure if this is the white knight. It looks like it might be because of the little bit of uh, white on the leaves. I see a little bit of red on the patio. So this may well be a baby one. And then here in this propagation box, I remember there was a baby somewhere here. It's still a baby. <laughs> Hello. And then this one is put out a new leaf. I'm trying to study the leaf. It looks like it might be a little bit white. I don't know if you noticed the new leaf. It should have some variegation on this. It's coming from the part of the stem that is variegated. You can see there, it's coming right off from that patio. So it should be variegated. And then this next one is put out a baby leaf as well. So look at these roots. They love it, they, they love to root in here, but I, honestly I say, I don't think it's the best for the leaves uh, when they're in here for too long because the leaves do need light to photosynthesize, but the roots love it in here. So I'm going to Thailand and I hope that these guys will do fine when I come back, so I'll give you guys more updates in a few weeks. This is a seven weeks update and probably our last one. And this is our parent plant. Look at this beautiful variegated leaf. And that's a new leaf that's coming with a little bit more of a splashier variegation. Look at this bit here, this is so cute. And this is the one that we didn't cut, I believe. So it's doing really well. And then here, this is the new vine. Look at this new leaf. How gorgeous is that? Look at that, it's like a dream, it's like a painting. Nice. And uh, sorry, I almost, I almost jumped ahead of myself there. But yeah, so this is growing a side shoot out of here. And this one is doing really well as well. Uh, as the mother plant, it's only given me one vine though. I'm quite surprised. Normally they would give me maybe more than one vine, but that's okay. This last one here, look at that new leaf. And it's doing really well. They're quite easy to propagate. That one looks wonderfully white. And it's grown out of this right here. This is a thicker stem, so it's got bigger leaves. Look at all these aerial roots. So these get rained on every day. And I think these guys are a little bit more tolerant to overwatering than a lot of the other plants that didn't make it in this area. And look at how gorgeous that is. Sorry about the water stain. It's just watered uh, this morning. All right, so we're indoors now. And I remember we have eight 
uh, eight cuttings, including one in water. Unfortunately, I don't remember where the one in water went. Misplaced it, but here's one. Oh my God, look at this new leaf right here. Sorry about that black, black dot there. That's actually uh, burnt rice hull bits. This is an unusually beautiful leaf. And actually their new stem isn't that red yet. I guess they become red eventually as they mature. So that's one. Here is another one. This one has rounder leaves if you look at it. It's got chubbier leaves. But yeah, look at this one. Beautiful variegated leaf. This one's a little bit more spottier. And then we've got the third contender here. Super cute. Look at that stem. I love that stroke there. Yeah, there's a lot of debris that's falling out from up top <laughs> causing this. But you know, if this was living outdoors, it would get rained on and the leaves would be a lot cleaner. But I do need to clean my leaves before I film them actually. Right, look at that, that's beautiful. That's three. And then this is the fourth contender. This one hasn't given me any variegation. So I think this one, let's see over the next few leaves, it might be a lost cause if it doesn't come out with any variegation. And then here is one more. Look at how gorgeous this is. This is number five. And well, let me rearrange this. A bit. Oh, all right, let me put that up there. Because I want to give them the best light possible, so I'm rearranging it. It's, the window is only in that slither uh, in the corner. So I'm going to try to rearrange it. They do need some good light to push out better variegation and to grow better. Now let's look at these ones here. These are the ones grown in the top box. Ah, I, I do see uh, three here, so that's all eight. I guess one of them might, must have been from the water propagation, and I'm guessing maybe the little one back there. But this is doing incredibly well here, but nothing else is alive here. Um, but yeah, I, I guess this is a testament as to how well these guys grow and how easily they are. Look at how shiny they look here in this prop box. Look at this shiny new leaves, they're so much cleaner here. Um, yeah, so these guys, I can't remember where they were grown. I think this was a single leaf cutting. Ah, oh, so nice. Look at that. I love, I love these kinds of glossy <laughs> look on the leaves. Um, and yeah, that one is doing well. So, and I haven't found a, a major difference between uh, growing them in prop boxes and out of prop boxes here in Indonesia. Because our, look at the roots actually. The only difference is that they do root a lot more, but then in terms of leaf growth, the speed is pretty much the same. They're growing, if I may say so, in fact, these guys are maybe putting out more leaves. But again, I don't remember, maybe these guys didn't have much roots to begin with and these guys were a little bit more established. That's also possible, but I haven't found much benefit in keeping them in prop boxes. This new leaf looks a little bit nice. It looks a little bit white here. So yeah, I'm gonna actually take, take this out of the box. I don't see any reasons to keep them in here for too long. And this one may need a little bit of a repotting. Look at all those cute aerial roots there. So I guess when you put them in uh, prop boxes like this, they will uh, push out more aerial roots, which you can actually propagate better from. And sorry, one more thing. I just want to show you this. But I think I got this bit of aerial root, the little nub, the little pink fuzzy thing in the middle of the screen. That's an aerial root. So the thing with prop boxes though is that they, they are getting a little bit less light than they are outside. So the variegation here may not be as wonderful. Of course, people can uh, argue that you could give them a, a lot of light from up top, which you can. But yeah, I'm gonna get to it this later because I've got more filming to do. But thank you so much for watching this episode. I guess all in all, I really recommend this for beginners. They're very easy to grow, very forgiving, and very, very satisfying and beautiful. And they're also one of the easier philodendrons to propagate and to learn about variegations from. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Feel free to DM me if you have any questions regarding plant care and propagations. Do comment down below so that uh, YouTube will promote my video to other people. Just tell me how your day's doing. Tell me what you've done today or maybe talk about how much you like or you don't like this plant or this episode or just say hello. It'll really help out the channel quite a lot. And thank you so much again. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.